Well, I'm Stotz Fasolt. I teach uh, watercolor and drawing at the Woodstock School of Art, where we are. We're in Studio Two of the Woodstock School of Art. And this is my class, uh, my Wednesday class behind us, and they're they're doing watercolors and uh, compositional drawings today. And we have a still life set up, but they're also working from uh, uh, photographs and projects that I have for them. And I teach basically I teach a uh, three value system of painting. Uh, uh, learning to distinguish between value areas in painting and learning to use the watercolor medium, technical, very kind of, we do a lot of technical exercises. Uh, I've been doing this here for 25 years now and I, I uh, think uh, each year that I'm beginning to understand how to, how to do it, how to teach uh, art. And uh, I will say that teaching has uh, really changed the way that I paint. My paintings have been informed to a large degree from the teaching experience uh, of painting. So they're getting simpler and more reduced in information, my own work, and I kind of teach that to the students as well. Uh, Woodstock School of Art is a very interesting institution, I think. Uh, it was once the Art Students League summer program, and uh, we've been here for 27 years, I believe, as the Woodstock School of Art. And uh, I'm gonna, I hope I'm gonna make it a couple more years here before I stop. Uh, teaching has is, is, uh, been very good for me. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm a little bit shy by nature, so it's really brought out a more uh, outgoing part of my personality, and it keeps me focused. You know, when you're an artist, you can, uh, and you're working alone, which you do a lot, you can wander off. So teaching, I teach two times a week, uh, three classes here. And it keeps me focused on painting, and it keeps and it's a very big social part of my existence too. Uh, so, for me, it's been a terrific experience as a, a learn, you know, learning to teach and being able to teach. I studied with um, originally um, when I was a teenager. I worked with uh, Gene McCarty in uh, Albany, New York, who was a watercolorist, and uh, I studied with him in watercolor and oil for many years, and I went to. Uh, uh, SUNY New Paul's and uh, the biggest influence there on me was Alex Martin who was a watercolorist also and my advisor and uh, he taught me really a lot of the ideas that I that I teach now I would say uh, ideas about design painting as design rather than just painting what you see some of my friends as artists uh, say they just paint what they see in front of them they don't do anything with it but most artists really uh, take the world and design it and emphasize certain parts of it and de-emphasize others. So uh, Alex Martin taught me those things in graduate school and I've kind of taken those and elaborated them over the years. And, uh, watercolor is known to be, I'll start with watercolor. Watercolor is known to be a very technical medium and uh, people are a little scared of it because of it, it's fluid, it's wet, and uh, it's a little hard to control at first. But once you get a few technical uh, ideas down and the ability to kind of flow with it. It becomes a very, very good medium, especially for teaching. Now, in the, in the past, basically, watercolor was a, always used as a teaching medium because it's very cheap to do. It's the most inexpensive way to paint, and uh, you can do a lot of them. So, so therefore, you're using the skills you use in painting, uh, value recognition and design. You're using them a lot, which you got to do to learn to paint. Uh, acrylics is a nice uh, medium for people who work in an apartment in Manhattan and can't have uh, linseed oil, but do you really want to put your, your most profound ideas in, in plastic? That's what I want to know. And oils is the traditional, uh, 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 the golden medium if you want to, the big grandfather of painting mediums. Um, some people have problems with the process of oil painting. I mean, it's actually, you got to be pretty neat and clean to, to do oil painting and there's solvents involved, so there's health issues involved. Uh, so a lot of people go to acrylics or watercolors because of health issues. But watercolor is a vibrant, vibrant medium uh, used, you know, it was taken from a very kind of Sunday painter, painterish kind of medium with, by people like Winslow Homer, John Singer Sargent, into a very powerful, vibrant medium. And there's been really strong artists who have worked in watercolors over the years, and no solvents, very healthy for you. So, uh, you know, one, one little thing about archivalness too, the, the paper we use in watercolor is very archival, and some of the oldest paintings we have are uh, on paper, and you know, it's a good surface for 
making your work last over time. So that separates from this and this. This is the, the two light values. Mm -hmm. And then along this, this edge, is what you can see. A, a nice neutral or a transparent dark. So there's a lot of ways to getting to a point, you know, not just the ones that uh, maybe we've talked about so far. There's many ways. And then there's points of emphasis in something like this where you take something a little darker, like here, where I'm just adding, it's like punctuation, you know yes. what I mean? Yes. And along that edge would be nice if that was, maybe not. Well, here I'm going to make an edge where this tree mm -hmm. hits your plane in the back. I guess it makes good trees. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So here we've created an edge, mm -hmm. and here we've created an edge. Here you have an edge. You need one where the uh, ground plane hits the back plane. So like, like here it's wet, right? Is it? Mm -hmm. So you're creating the edge of the tree against the pond and the mm -hmm. edge of this plane down here and it comes up to the edge of the pond on this side and then we'll take clear water soften the